had to live Cause some people never learn But they're not gonna, not gonna watch me burn Cause baby, I got you, 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 you
everybody. Welcome to this episode of Keeping It Real with the Ombre. <laughs> I just, sorry, I'm dealing with, a, with something that happened. I need to get taken care of it when I get off. So, um, <clears throat> <coughs> excuse me. I do have a little cough today, so I apologize for that. The winds are howling here in Southern California, and so, so are my allergies. Uh, hold on. <laughs> it's okay. There we go. Okay. Sorry, trying to deal with a bunch of things at one time. So, hey, a busy week this week. Everything's been good for you guys, hopefully. <coughs> it's good here. Um, got my new uh, tattoo started yesterday. Um, it's uh, it's going to be a really cool design. This is what it will look like um, pretty much with minor changes to it. I'll show you guys here. But I could show you. Um, it doesn't look very good like this here but because it's got a film on it. But... Um, and it's been kind of, uh, the ink comes, comes leaches out a little bit when it's got this derma stuff on it uh, because they pack it with ink and um, it uh, oozes in, while it's healing because there's like stuff that comes out of the skin because of how damaged the skin is. But this is what, ideally what it's going to look like here. Let me see if I can get the light. So that's ideally what it's going to look like. It's a Calabasas skull in a, in a gabi. The artist, you know, did this thing originally down here, but I'm gonna have he's changed it to more of like a pina thing, which I asked him to do. So it should look really cool. But I'll show you what it looks like with the um with with the fresh ink before they wrapped it. I can show you guys what it looks like. Um, it's gonna be really cool. It looks it looked great. Just, they just did the black yesterday, and they'll color it up in a week or so after. The black heels, and that way I'm not sitting there for four or four hours getting my skin just beat to death. But let me see here. And then we get some other things I want to talk about too. I'll show you guys this first, this picture first. So, um, uh, let's see. There it is. Go this way. Upload. There. Okay, so I'll show you what this looks like. There. Okay. All right, so here, I'll pop it up on the screen here. So just give me a second to, to get it here on the screen, and then I'll show you guys what it looks like. It, I, I was really impressed. The artist that I'm using is really good artist. He did, he was the same one that did my Maya Well here, which, I mean, still looks great. It's a little light because I need to put some lotion on it and stuff, but... Um, he did the Maya well, the goddess of agave and fertility for me. Uh, he's a really good artist. He does great work and his, his, um, his tattoos really pop. So if you've ever been thinking about getting a tattoo and you're here in the Southern California area, I definitely recommend using, using him, uh, cause he does a great job. He's a passionate tattoo artist and, um, here it is. He does great work. So, uh, my my daughter's actually going to get tattooed by him too because she wants a little tattoo. So my wife has just agreed to let her do that. So let's do this here. Let's go. Um, whoops. Keep my headphones from getting feedback here. Right here, let's do this. And then uh, this. And then we'll find it here. And I'll show you guys what it looks like. This is just with the black work done. All right, so here it is. This is the the tattoo yesterday after they did the uh, initial black work on it. So it's a Calabasas skull. It's going to be nice, colored up and stuff. And then it's agave that's behind it. And then you can see the it's more of a pina now at the bottom. So it's going to be, um, you know, basically like a mezcal um, agave spirit kind of. Uh, kind of themed tattoo. So I'm excited about that. It's going to look really cool. Um, I'm looking forward to getting the color done next week. And then once it's finished, I'll show you guys so you guys can see um, what it looks like when it's done. Uh, and my wife's excited about it too, which is cool. So um, we got that going on. That's uh, what's happening yesterday. Now, um, <laughs> let's check in. Let's check in with some subscribers. Some of the stuff that's being said right now is kind of funny. So let's check in with our 
our viewers. Hello, John Mandu. How are you doing? Bienvenido. Welcome. Glad you can make it today. Hey, hola, Travis. Bienvenido. Welcome. Glad you can make it. <laughs> Always glad to see Travis, a good friend of mine. Hola and hook him. Hook him from Austin, Texas. <laughs> How you doing, Rob? Glad you can make it. Bienvenido. <clears throat> uh, Tater Dump. <coughs> Bienvenido. Welcome. <coughs> glad you can make it. Hopefully you got your glasses okay. Because <laughs> he did order some G4 glasses for me. Would love to see the finished tattoo and complete it. I absolutely will show you guys. <coughs> not, a, not a problem. It will have a film on it when it's done next week. But I won't have it until after the live stream. So the week after that. The one. <laughs> Buenos dias, Mr. Mark. Buenos dias. The one. Hope all is well with you and your family and everyone in here. Same for y'all. Well, thank you so much. Nigualmente. We hope everything's good with you and your family as well. Uh, El Mexico, bienvenido. Welcome. Glad you can make it. Elrond Hubbard. Elrond Hubbard. <laughs> hello. Uh, hello, Houston, Texas. Elrond Hubbard, huh? I just realized your wife also has to worry about tequila related tattoos and not just bottles. Yes. Yes, I mean, we do have quite the coverings of tattoos. I've got, for all of you that had never seen my tattoos, I have my, my humidor here um, working on a, a Weber Blue Agave. So that's my tequila tattoo with the Hema, humidor trimming up the agave. I have the Maya Well, the goddess of agave and fertility. She's a Aztecan goddess, uh, which is really cool. And then I have Mickey Mouse here, and then I have turtles for my family here. So um, I do get, get a little collection of tattoos. So, uh, but if this this one will probably be my last one. This one here will probably be my last. Silas uh, uh, B, bienvenido, welcome. What's up, hombre? Have you tried Suerte XA Seven Year Crown Edition? I have. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, I think it's five year though. Seven years is something else right into the lips seven years something uh very nice well thank you tater dom appreciate that thank you miguel bienvenido welcome glad you can make it hey ruben happy tequila thursday to you too my friend bienvenido welcome glad you can make it curtis bienvenido welcome glad you can make it okay so some things that are uh in the works um the uh, Viva Mexico Special Blanco is in the works right now. They're getting uh, Tequila Hombre Edition stickers ready for it. And then um, we're going to be working on getting that coming here to the U.S. for the Tequila Barrel and Agave Collective. Such a good Blanco. You guys are going to love it. Now, um, one of the things, one of the reasons why I picked this Blanco is it's not like any other thing that Viva Mexico has done. It's, it's different. And that's one of the things that I liked about it and why we bought the whole batch. It's completely different and it's absolutely delicious. Not that Viva Mexico isn't delicious. It's delicious too. But I don't want people to think, well, I've tried Viva Mexico and I wasn't a huge fan of it. It's not the flavor profile of regular Viva Mexico. It's completely different. Uh, it's an exclusive bat, one-time batch. Uh, it was an experimental batch that uh, Sergio Cruz did, has done. And it's been sitting in a tank for two years, just marrying and making itself more and more beautiful. So it's fantastic stuff. Um, so I'm looking forward to that coming in. Uh, we've got a, um, the Santo Fino Añejo just get out of customs. So they're going to be sending me uh, sample bottles of that. We're going to be the first group, uh, the first anybody uh, in the world to have a single barrel Añejo from Santo Fino, which is, uh, Sammy Hagar's tequila. So that's coming. That's going to be exciting for the collective as well. Um, and then we have the two barrels from San Matias, the Gran Reserva, which are coming. Uh, unfortunately, they when when Sazerac ordered them, they ordered them as 80 proof, and so they were diluted. Instead of they didn't order them as 90 proof like they were supposed to be, and so um, Sazerac messed it up for us. So we're getting two um, 80 proof barrels, but that's okay because when I did the tasting in the video on YouTube, it was done at 80 proof, and they're freaking delicious. They were so good. They're so good that I would have been sad had we have let them go and let somebody else take them because they were exceptional compared to the other barrels that we had. So they're going to be really good. I know the, the, the members of the, of the collective are going to enjoy them. 
and it's going to be fantastic. So, and if you're not a member of the collective, I recommend joining. The, the link is in the description. We have a really good group of people. We've got some really strong members, and everyone's having a good time sharing stuff. And of course, I'm always there to answer questions for you guys and stuff as well. And uh, I get tagged all the time in posts, and people ask and want to know information on things. And so, um, I'm always happy happy to share. Uh, we got some stuff in for review too that I'm going to be reviewing. Uh, a still strength from Don Abraham, uh, which is uh, out of 1480 which is the Rivera family, uh, runs that one. It's Tequila Las Americas. Um, that I'm going to be doing a review of this week, this next week. And then uh, I also have the Tau Still Strength that came in, um, or the Tau High Proof. It's not necessarily Still Strength. It's just High Proof. I'll do a review of that as well. And then I was talking to Importer, and maybe um, if it's really good, we'll get some to put up on Ferment and Still. I'll have them order it. Um, the G4 XA came in yesterday, sold out, gone, disappeared. <laughs> the collective members bought it all up. Uh, we limited it to one bottle, so as many members as possible could get a bottle, which is great. And then uh, we did the repo the week before that, and that sold out as well, the G4 repo. <laughs> and so uh, the G4 is gone. <laughs> it's... Uh, it got, went quick. So I do have a bottle of the new uh, Extra Nejo. I picked up a bottle, uh, but f from a different store uh, before they told us that they messed up on the pricing and stuff. So I'll do a review on that if you want, guys want to do a review of the new G4. And I can actually compare it to the old G4 uh, Extra Nejo because I, I actually have a bottle from the first batch of Extra Nejo that I've got a couple bottles from the first batch of Extra Nejo that G4 ever did. So... Um, I have that, um, and I can actually do like a comparison side by side. Uh, what are some other things that are going on? Let me see. Uh, I'm going to be going to Mexico in April uh, and spending a week there, and so I'm going to get some great content together. And, of course, those of you that are members here on the YouTube channel, I will be posting some members-only content uh, daily from Mexico. I try to do that when I go there for the members. And so I'll be posting like a, like a journal, like a vlog, uh, on YouTube for members only and so you guys every day I'll check in kind of tell you what what's going on and what kind of things to look for and give them insider insider information so those of you that are members here on the YouTube channel um, you'll get to see that stuff while I'm in Mexico and I'm gonna be having some special guests with me in Mexico uh, traveling with me to the different distilleries and stuff and I will be um, thrilled to introduce you guys to them as well and then um, so that'll be fun and then we're going to be visiting some new distilleries, some stuff that some distilleries that you guys normally don't hear too much about. Uh, and we're going to be talking to some master distillers that you guys normally don't hear from. Um, but it's they're, they're great. They're fantastic master distillers, multi generational. Um, they're masters in their own in their own rights and make fantastic tequila and know what they're doing and have a lot of history and culture behind them. And so uh, I'm really excited about um, sharing them with you and their history and the kind of stuff they do. So that's going to be great as well. And then we're also going on there going to be going to be with the Camarenas working on a new Carrera project where for the Tequila Barrel and Agave Collective, we're going to be getting a single barrel. Actually, sorry, it's going to be a double, double wood, double barrel, single barrel, though. So it, it's going to be a single barrel selection. Uh, or a barrel pick, I'm just called barrel because it's they they aged in French oak barrels and in American oak barrels, so it's it's double wood, double barrels, whatever you want to call it, and then it's going to be a single barrel choice. So I'm going to go taste through all the barrels and pick out a barrel that we like the best, and it's going to be high proof. So we're looking at 106 proof right now, and if it needs to be diluted, if it's too rough or whatever, we may dilute it down. I'll make the determination when I'm there uh, doing the tasting, but um, that should be. Um, that should be fantastic. So I'm looking forward to that. We'll do some filming when I'm with them uh, as well up at Casa Camarena in Arandas uh, with uh, Lalo and Mauricio Camarena. Uh, and I'm sure I'll be hanging out with them somewhat. And then, of course, I'm going to try to meet up with some other friends in Mexico, too. And maybe I'll hang out with Alex Gonzalez from Mana if he's available because um, he wants to hang out when I'm in Guadalajara. And then also, uh, he's the drummer from Mana, for those of you that don't know. Um, he's a good friend of mine. 
uh, and he does. He owns a brand called Malavida, which I love. It's fantastic. If you haven't tried the Repo and Añejo from Malavida, it's great. And if your wife loves wants a good Blanco tequila, their Blanco tequila is perfect for for the women folk because uh, it's very approachable. And my wife actually, it's one of the only Blanco tequilas that she likes, and she's like, I can drink that, and which was surprising for me. So um, we'll be doing that as well there. Uh, and then today, I just got a notice from my friend um, Chavez, uh, Chavez, Salvador Chavez, 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 uh, Chavez, Chavez. And Chava um, has a special batch that he wants uh, us to look at for the collective. We probably won't buy the whole batch right now because we still have some of the La Luna Ancestral, which is still remarkable. I'm still surprised that we still have any of that left. But... Um, but this batch is going to be a true ancestral tequila, but it's done as it's certified as a mezcal because uh, you can't make tequila at a at a distillery where you make mezcal. The CRT says you, if you're going to get certified for tequila, you have to you have to um, it has to be tequila only. You can't make mezcal out of there as well. So he does mezcal out of uh, his little home ancestral. Um, distillery and so this batch was done there and it's a pure ancestral tequila so or mezcal so but it's made just like an ancestral tequila and it's not like the other batch where the other batch they put pomegranate in the second distillation um and made it kind of like a, a vegan pachuga this one it's a straight um mezcal with no fruit in the second so it's going to be like a true ancestral uh tequila and um he's going to send me a bottle for review so i'll let you guys know about that and if it's really good and I like it. We'll order a bunch of cases uh, and for ferment and still and see if we can um, get a bunch of people to try what a real ancestral tequila looks like. Not some bland stuff that comes from a you know tequila distillery. This is the way, I mean, we're, we're looking for something authentic, something the way that it was done, you know, back when the great, great, great grandpas were making it in their backyard. And that's what this is going to be like. It's going to be truly authentic so i'm looking forward to, to tasting that and seeing uh, what it tastes like and if it's good we'll pick up some cases for ferment still and uh and hopefully you guys will buy it and we can um celebrate this amongst tequila fans and maybe start a new journey into some mezcals from it as well which would be fun because i want to start doing some more mezcal mondays and uh, focusing a little more on some mezcal so um all right, so where were we? Were we down here? All right, so Sweet Sinity says, uh, love the video you did with Curiosity Public. Just started sipping good tequila, and all four of you have taught me a lot. Thanks. Well, you're welcome. Yeah, it was fun doing that Curiosity Public uh, collaboration. <clears throat> um, they give a, you a discount for that screw up. Uh, give you a discount for the. Oh, no, they didn't. No, no discounts. Nope. We're paying full price for it. Uh, hola from Cincinnati. Hola. Bienvenido. Welcome, Big Ed. Love Cincinnati. I grew up there. Uh, hopefully, you'll say hi to Kings Island for me. I miss the beast. I want to go ride that roller coaster so bad. Uh, how was the LA Tequila event? It was okay. It wasn't great. It was okay. Um, I just got to catch up with some friends when I was there, but there was nothing there that I was like, super excited about. Um, I got to see my friends from... Um, from Chopin Imports there, and uh, and see my buddy Alejandro, who does a Burrito Fiestero. I love his mezcal line and his agave nectar. By the way, those of you that have asked me about the Senior Mage uh, agave nectar, we got more coming in, so we should have another case coming in, but all they, they only had a case left at the distributor, so um, this case, once it's sold, uh, it will be gone for a little while until they get more into the distributor. Once they do, we'll, we'll get some more, but... Um, but he gave me a new bottle of uh, their new expression. If you guys want to see it, I'll show you. Here. So their bottles, their their bottles are really cool, and they're all hand painted by people from the village um, where their distillery is, where their vinatas are, the little village in Durango. So these are all hand painted. So each bottle is di completely different. And kind of like its own little um, piece of art of Mexican art. So this is the hand painted bottle, and this was purple. They have another one that's blue, that's a manzanilla. They have a yellow one and an orange one, and so you can pick up all these different bottles that are all hand painted, 
And again, you can buy an another bottle of this and this will be completely different because it's all hand painted. So this is a Tepanete. This is a different kind of agave out of Durango. Um, I haven't tried it yet. I'm going to do a review. Actually, I did try it at the event and it was tasty. So I'm looking forward to doing a review on this and uh, telling you guys about this new and then we'll order it for, um, I'll have them order it for ferment and still too. So we can, you guys can get it if you want it. Really good. Uh, so, and then they do a mezcal gin. If you're a gin drinker and you uh, want to try something that's really good, um, even if you're somebody who doesn't like gin, the mezcal gin seems to be appealing to a bunch of people that I had pointed it out to and re recommended it to that don't like regular gin, but they love the mezcal gin uh, because of how it was made and the flavor profile of it. It's really good. So try that one too. I recommend it. Um, the Senior Soto is really good. Uh, so they have some good agave spirits from um, Mage Spirits, which is the the parent company of uh, Burrito Fiestero. Um, they have some good stuff. So so I'll look forward to telling you guys about that. Yes, please compare the G4XA for us. Okay, I can do that. Uh, any idea of how to remove red plastic and twist off Tapatio one liter bottles? <laughs> Trying to fit a statement. Don't, don't try to, don't try to do that. Instead, just buy a um, buy a jar right here. I'll show you what I use. Uh, I had one out here just the other day because I was getting ready to do another project with it. When I have a liter sized jar or thing, uh, where is it? What did I do with my jar? Oh, I think I brought it downstairs. Do I have one up here? Oh, here. Go to Amazon and you buy a jar like this. It's got a it's got a rubber seal on it. They're cheap. You can reuse them over and over again too. This is a liter jar. Yeah, one liter. And so you can you can put the whole a whole liter in here uh, and then drop your stave in and then seal it. And then it sits in this jar and it ages in here. That's what I do. And then I use a funnel to pour it back into the bottle uh, after it's done aging. And that way you don't have to worry about doing it in the bottle. Just keep the bottle. Don't throw the bottle away. And then you can just fill the bottle back up. That's what I did with the um, the 110 um, aging project that was made to be a, uh, a clone of the Tapatio Excelencia. That's what I did. So um, I wouldn't try to remove the, the red plastic because then that way you can put the cap back on after you age it and fill it back in there. So um, that's what I'd recommend doing. All right. So I did some videos this week. I did a review of... Uh, I don't even remember what I reviewed. I did I did the uh, a video on flavor profiles. Okay, and that kind of shook the world. I think people were kind of like, "Wow!" Uh, but yeah, it's it was uh, very inf 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 very uh, educational, very informational. I provided a lot of information. There's 20 minutes worth of information. I went kind of deep into the whole creating flavor profile things. And one of the reasons why I know this is because I've actually worked with some brands on enhancing and creating a better flavor profile uh, and created special editions and stuff with them. And so it's a little different, some of the stuff that I do versus some of the other guys out there that are doing uh, reviews and being paid for them and stuff. Um, I don't get paid for them, but instead I'll work on special projects like this. And when we create something that's really unique and different and really good, then I'll buy the whole batch to support the brand and we'll offer it on from it and still to you guys. So you guys can get something just a little different and interesting. But I went through a lot of different things and, and this all this stemmed from me having dinner with um, with a, a distillery owner, Master Ticulero, where he's like, you know, Mark, he goes, you know, it's really kind of amazing to me that, you know, he, he's been getting harassed by people. And people have been bugging him and he's and bugging him because they're like, you know, you're diluting your 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 reputation of the distillery you're diluting your flavor profile by giving it the same flavor profile to everybody he's like but i'm not he goes the people don't understand you know i can get i can change i can do thousands of different flavor profiles and i was like oh, that maybe hundreds you know but i wouldn't know about thousands um but he's you know but he's like you know they can they can take agave from one field you know that's in one area that has black soil and the agave would be kind of like this, where they can pick it from the red fields, the red soil fields, the, the different mineral contents in the agave would be like this, and they'll pick it from a higher altitude field because he's got a you know, big, huge land with options of 
different places that are growing agave that have different flavor profiles. They can get eight year old agave, they can get ten year old agave, they can get five or six year old. And it's like, yeah. And he's and he's like, and then yeast. He goes, yeast. I, I, there's thousands of different kinds of yeast that we can use to create different flavor profiles. And that's the key. A lot of people don't know that, you know, they get every, everybody gets into this stuff that they talk about where it's like, ooh. You know these marketing gimmicks like for example one guy had commented on the on the video about um adding adding fiber and he's like yeah i like it when they had fiber because it really changes the flavor profile it's like no it do- doesn't really it doesn't really the fiber now what a lot of people don't know is that, first of all when they first started making tequila and even like a lot of mezcals and stuff still do it now like the ancestral mes- mezcals the fiber was included in the fermentation and it like always was and they just stopped doing it because it creates a mess and it really had no real benefit to um, to the fermentation or to the you know flavor profile or anything. It just created a lot more work for them to clean things up to try to get the fiber out of everything, especially like the fermentation tanks. Because you have a big tank and it's filled with, it's got fiber in it, then you have to send somebody in there and try to shovel all this fiber out versus just draining the tank, right? And the only thing the fiber really does is it gives more fermentables for the for the um, for the yeast, because the extraction methods that they use for, like example, a Tohona, right? A Tohona basically gets like around 65, 70 at most percentage of efficiency rate and getting the sugars that. So there's a lot of residual sugars and stuff in there. So you do a Tohona, you may want to toss the fibers in and get a little more fermentables. Uh, because the yeast will find the fermentable still in the fibers and eat it and convert you know more alcohol and stuff for you and draw it out of the fibers. But uh, what they used to do in the old days when they were making tequila, they didn't ha- have everybody didn't have burrows with the onas and stuff or or roller mills, you know, until later on when machinery started coming around. But they used to just take the agave after they cooked them and they would just bash them with mallets or with axes and stuff and chop them up and get all the fibers and stuff going. And then they just put it in a in a vat and with water, right, and let it ferment that way. And then the the sugars and stuff would come out of the fibers and and would get into the water and the yeast would do its work and it create it would create tequila, or you know, a, a spirit, create alcohol, right. And then it, they'd have to distill it to get to get the tequila. But um, the only thing fibers really does is maybe provide an insulation level on top that increases the the um, temperature of the fermentation because when yeast is eating your sugars and converting them to alcohol it it does it does three things when yeast eats the sugar it converts it to alcohol it cre- it creates co2 and it also creates heat so um, it will actually increase the heat of the fermentation and so uh, when it does that it creates a higher temperature range in which it has to work in and could also cause it to create different flavors because of that, because it may draw the yeast out of its current, your its favorite or most favorable temperature range, uh, depending on what temperature they're fermenting at. But it creates heat, and so you, like when I was doing beers, I used to keep my fermentation um, chilled and keep them it monitored at a certain temperature, so I get the best cleanest fermentation that I could. Well, in these big vats that they do outside they don't do temperature control on them they don't have temperature control systems and so um they get what they get from the ambient temperature and so if you put fiber on top too there's no way for some of that heat to be released and so it actually will act as a insulator and can increase the the temperature of your fermentation same with like we're using wooden tanks too when you use a wooden vat uh, it's more insulatory so it will maintain whatever temperature you put the um the mosto in at it at it, it a good temperature rate there it doesn't increase that much as much as as stainless steel does since stainless steel um can is a is a conductor of either cold or hot and can do an exchange where it'll it'll draw the, the heat from the um the mosto if and if it's cold outside it'll actually cool it if it's hot outside it'll actually heat it up and so uh, stainless is is good in that way too where you can put like a thermal jacket around it and run uh, cold water through it and you can chill it on the outside that way if they wanted to do that um, Felipe does it um, at El Pandillo does have thermal jackets around his his fermentation tanks um, but I haven't seen if, I don't think they're, they're not water jackets so I don't think he pumps water in there to keep them cool uh, but he does have some thermal jackets in there maybe in the winter time to keep it from getting too cold 
But there's things like that too, that um, where fermentation is important, and fermentation is like 65, 70 percent of your flavor profile uh, because, of course, the alcohol is then drawn out through distillation. And a lot of the stuff that people think adds flavor is left in the still. It's not even brought into the tequila. So, um, so yeah, there's a lot of things they can do to change the flavor profile. And uh, when I I have I do have con- some consulting clients that I work with. We're creating some brands uh, with, uh, and we've gone through and worked on creating flavor profiles with uh, the master distillers and stuff. So I do have some experience in working with this and understand how it works. So uh, wanted to let you guys know that. Uh, so that was a fun video to do and hopefully very educational. It's long, it's 20 minutes, but I did do definitely recommend if you haven't seen it yet to go watch that because it's um, very educational and will kind of shed some light on to you on flavor profiles and, and why some distilleries can offer 40 different brands and all of them not taste the same. So that's kind of some insight into that. So, all right, excuse me. <clears throat> So, Mark, what are your go-to Blanco, high-proof Blanco, Repo, and Añejo at the moment? Also curious as to what your current tastes are. Okay, uh, well, Rello, um, my current high-proof Blanco, of course, is Carrera 54. That That is the goat for me right now. Um, absolutely phenomenal. I love it. Uh, batch 1 is my favorite. I've tried Batch 2. It's okay. Um, it's good. It's definitely, I definitely would recommend it. But if you haven't tried batch one, batch one is exceptional for me. And that's the one that we sell on Ferment and Still uh, because that one got to sit uh, for about a year and a half uh, before in a, in a stainless tank and got to mellow and kind of meld together. And it's just really nice and really refined and it's just beautiful. So that's my favorite. Regular Blanco. Uh, yeah, pick one. I don't know. There's a bunch. I. I've been going more high proof lately, so I haven't been really buzzing too much about regular Blancos. But uh, try something you haven't tried before, like some of the ones I talked about. The seven you must try that people don't talk about, like the Santa Leza or um, the Dos Angeles is a is a good Blanco. They have the Rosa is a phenomenal. That's my favorite. Uh, or um, um, Toralta, you know, there's some other good ones in that video. So watch those videos, you see. And then Añejo, of course, it's Nuevo Uno. Añejo Deep is my favorite Añejo. That one's fantastic. I love it. It's got such a rich flavor to it. Uh, the information provided regarding the different soil types is very interesting. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of different stuff that they can work with. And, of course, you know, just like growing crops, you know, depending on the mineral content of the soil and, and what it has, it can affect the flavor profile. Uh, but it's it's minute. It's not it's not, it's not not that big of a, of a difference. And somebody asked, too, about water and you, waters people think because of what Felipe does that water makes a big difference. Um, well, it it does because you get the minerality and stuff from it, but it doesn't as far as like um, really changing a flavor profile because water is water. I mean, it's water. It's and you know rainwater is water with nothing in it. It's been filtered. It has to be filtered because there's pollution. Uh, especially with the way they burn stuff in Mexico and how bad the air quality is there. Uh, when they click rainwater, they better filter it. And he does. He's got a big filtration system that he runs it through um, that filters everything out of it. But there's no minerals or anything because it doesn't touch the ground. It doesn't go through volcanic rock or anything like that. The deep well water is very mineral rich. And it does you know, add a little bit in the flavor profile. But it's more of a minerality. It really doesn't change the actual flavor, though. Or, um, you can get the same flavor using just regular spring water uh, and making sure you ferment it the right, right way and stuff like that. So there's you know, a bunch of things that people do um, that can change the flavor profiles. <clears throat> but, you know, tequila always has been water, yeast, and agave. And, you know, then it's up to, to changing the fermentation processes and stuff like that to adjust the flavor profiles or the quality of the agave because quality ingredients makes a difference. You use a quality yeast um, that works well and does a good job. It'll make a difference as well. Mason jars are cheaper at Ross under $6 each for liter size with rubber gas. There you go. Okay, so go to Ross and grab them. It works. Uh, I did a French oak number three stave in Sieta Leguas for four weeks. Removed and let it sit for four weeks. Tasted like wood way too much. Will it mellow with more time? Yeah, absolutely. Let it sit. You did a French oak number three on Siete Leguas for four weeks. Okay, you removed it and let it sit for four weeks. Tastes like wood. Way too much. Will it mellow? Yeah, just let it sit. Let it go for longer. Yeah, until it, it 
it'll mellow out over a lot of time. I, I had one for a year and it was beautiful. So just let it let it mellow. You should have been tasting every week though. Like I always said, taste every week to make sure it's not too strong for you because what you may say tastes like too much wood may be perfect for me. Uh, because um, I love a good, uh, hearty, robust um, barrel presence, and it, but as long as there's an agave presence, and I've I've aged a bunch of different uh, blancos. I haven't aged yet the Leguas, uh, but I've aged a bunch of good blancos, and they turned out phenomenal. I've and still lots of agave up front, even even six and eight weeks in. So let it sit and just try it, revisit it again, try another, start another batch. But every week, taste it, or try doing one for two weeks take the same staves and put them in for two weeks because then they won't be as strong because you've used a bunch of it for the four weeks you don't need a new stave for that drop on drop the old stave in and in a new batch let it go for a couple weeks and try it and, or let it go and try it every week to make sure it hits the spot where you like and once you find the spot that fits best for you then keep going at that time frame for all your batches and you'll know you hit the right mark that's what i do i've done i've done like close to a hundred different aging projects and I've experimented and some of them turned out where I love them and some of them turned out where it's like, okay, this is not so great. So what do I learn from this next time? I'll go less time or I'll do this or change things up, right? It's experimental. So, um, and it's up to you to taste it every week. If you're not, not, if you don't know what you're doing and don't have a set thing, taste it every week. And we talk about that all the time. Taste it every week. Don't just let it go four weeks. If you haven't tried it because you don't know if you're going to like it, taste it every week. But letting it sit longer is not going to hurt it at all. It may, it may improve it for you. So that's what I recommend. Uh, don't say that. I hope I haven't ruined a bottle of C54. I went three weeks now and letting it sit about a week of sitting. Don't worry. You worry too much, Rob. Don't worry. Just, just, just let it go. Just let it go. Try it in a few weeks. Don't worry about it. Okay. French oak number one. Yeah, we know. You've talked about it before. Don't worry about it. Just just relax. <laughs> Let it go a few weeks. Start a new aging project. and Get your mind off the old one. Start a new one. Taste it every week. Do it for two weeks. If you thought that four weeks was too much, do it for two weeks. But everybody's flavor profiles are completely different, what they like. And I enjoy when I, I go six and eight weeks on mine, and they're phenomenal. And I can send them to you, and you go there for, you'd say they're phenomenal. From, 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 phenomenal too so don't worry about it just relax and just let it let it do its thing okay uh i wonder how good distillery can make good tequila and also make some what i feel is not so good tequila for a celebrity yeah it's how they the celebrity picks the flavor profiles they they they're the ones that say this is what i want and they give them what they want that's how it's it's easy to do not everything from you know all the distilleries are great there's the stuff from el pandillo that i don't like uh, I'm not a big Volans fan. I don't think their tequila is that great. There's other brands from from uh, El Pendillo I like more, like Toralta and G4. Um, so, yeah, there's not every distillery is going to make a flavor profile that appeals to everybody. And, that, and just because you like certain stuff that a distillery does doesn't mean you're going to like everything that they do. And that's fine. That's perfectly fine. And no one's going to think any worse of you or anything for it. And if they do, who cares? Right? It's your It's your your taste that matters it's your preference that matters you're the one that's buying it and drinking it so you know you don't like it don't buy it buy a different brand instead all right so uh donald bienvenido welcome glad glad you make it this is hello it's my first time logging on with you uh very in, informa informative well thank you very much i'm glad you like it that's what i'm here to do here to help answer questions and stuff uh, I enjoy interacting with you guys and helping you answer your questions and guiding you towards the good stuff. So I met Julio Bernejo at Tommy's and he talked about how the amount of water received by the agave during its growth cycle will impact the tequila final flavor. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes, relax. Rob, you stress too much, man. Just relax. There, there used to be a thing um, in Humbering. There was a guy that, that did a book. His name's, um, what's his name? Uh, Comedian or something like that. I forgot his name. But he's wrote like the, the Bible for Homebrewing. And every single thing that he did in there, he's like, he's like, okay, pitch your yeast. And then he always he's had a saying, relax and have a homebrew. And it's like, because people would stress about their batches and whether they were going to ruin it, whether it's going to be fine, what's going on. 
And the whole key is just relax. Don't stress about it. Work on something else. Forget about it. Go back and revisit it, and you'll end up liking it. Don't worry. Uh, what's the key to going to look like in a year? How about five years? A lot more brands are additive laden stuff. What about prices? No, uh, actually, you know, it's everyone's moving towards not doing additive stuff anymore. Of course, the, the sweet stuff still sells. People like it. The majority of the consumers like it. But um, you're going to see a lot more brands disappearing is what you're going to see over the next five years because price of agave has come down. The demand is decreasing, and there's a lot more brands sitting with inventory in their warehouse because it's just not selling like it was before um the stable brands will still be there prices will not drop because they're going to make money off of it now so that's what we're going to look at and so we got to see what happens now since the price of agave is down um you could see a lot more uh special b releases coming out and special batches because they're what you want to use up the agave uh, and if they do that, then you may see some reasonably priced special editions that they do because it doesn't cost as much now to make batches. Um, or we could see some new brands that come out that are a little more affordable than some of the stuff that came out during the shortage uh, that have established their pricing structure already. So um, that's what we're looking at. So, uh, oh. Yes, relax. That's a deep breath. Deep breath, my friend. Deep breath. Breathe. Is copper pot distillation more costly? Would a distillery choose to go stainless steel? Is the cost or flavor? Is this cost or flavor? Well, it is more costly to install a copper still, a brand new copper still, than it is a stainless steel still. Uh, stainless steel stills are more durable. They'll last longer than copper stills do. Copper is a soft metal. And so um, they do eventually wear out and need to be replaced. And they need to be maintained a lot more, too, because of uh, the, the interaction that copper has with the nitrates in the, in the um, distillate, where it, it turns the copper blue. And they need to be constantly scrubbed and get the blue out. Otherwise, you could end up with blue chips or blue um, pieces in your tequila or your distillate. It's happened before. I've seen bottles with blue stuff in it before. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was at um, Cascaween when they had to pull their their um, coil out of their stainless steel still and uh, try to clean all the blue stuff off the coil and <clears throat> and reset it and put it back into the still before they ran their um, distillation in it because they didn't want it to be blue, the distillate to be blue. So there's a lot of things that go on. Um, Flavor-wise, uh, a lot of brands think stainless gives them a cleaner flavor, which uh, I tend to agree. Uh, copper will add a metallic kind of taste flavor profile to it. So when you have copper in there, it will leach some of the metallic um, notes into it. So it could give it a mineral kind of flavor profile to it, a little a metallic notes to it. Where stainless is more clean, uh, it doesn't leach anything into it, and it's uh, easier to clean, easier to maintain. So a lot of times, if they do use um, stainless, they'll go just pure stainless steel, which um, a lot believe it gives a cleaner flavor profile. Uh, some will use uh, copper uh, stainless steels with copper coils, so they use the the copper as a as a cooling coil, so it doesn't need to be heated. It won't get soft when it's heated, like a like a steel will, which can affect the um, durability of the copper over time uh, so it is more expensive to do a copper still and it's and it's harder too because you need uh, a coppersmith to come and create this and to basically form the still for you that's one of the issues that felipe had with creating with installing a new copper still and, and is, is is he was having a hard time getting a coppersmith to come out and and build the still for him uh, when i was there he's like yeah we've had this still been working on it but i can't it, I can't get time with the coppersmith to come out and to um, finish building the still. So he's adding, a, he's adding another one. You'll see a picture every once in a while. You see a picture that Felipe posts up on uh, his Facebook profile of the distillation area there from above. I took that picture. So uh, that's my picture. So you can see all the still, the copper stills lined up there. And he was he's adding another one. And he was waiting, trying to get the coppersmith to get out there to... And, Finish the still, but he was having a hard time getting time with them. So, 
Uh, my bottle of Cascoine Blanco looks kind of green, probably because of the label. It could be, yeah. <laughs> thanks for the thoughtful answer to my question, and thanks for all your great videos. I've learned well, thank you. I'm glad you learned so much, Jason, in Chicago. Um, I'm glad they, they're helpful for you, and I uh, thank you for watching and supporting the channel by watching the videos. I appreciate that. <clears throat> I appreciate you guys' support. Don't forget, you guys, we get 25 people on here. <laughs> Click that thumbs up button. Give me a like to help help the channel out. It doesn't cost anything to click to give a like, so just click the thumbs up. We get seven likes so far. Come on. Yes. <coughs> <coughs> You're a coppersmith, but be concerned about the solder use. Can't be lead, and a lot of it has other... Yes. Yeah, You. you they don't use... I don't know what they use. They don't use lead solder on it. They use something else. But it's, you know, they're big, big copper. Um, <clears throat> if they do use lead, maybe it's on the outside. If they use uh, solder. <clears throat> I'm not sure. I, I didn't ask him how they built the stills. I wasn't that interested in that that aspect of it when I was there. <clears throat> so that was, that was a fun video. We had a lot of c good conversations about that. If you haven't watched that, watch the Flavor Profile video. It's very uh, informative and informational. I did receive another tequila line that I'm going to do a review on. I'll show you guys this one. <laughs> hey, thank you for the super chat, California. I appreciate it. The $4.99 super chat. I appreciate it, buddy. Thank you. Okay, so this brand is called Zolo... Solo in su in cuintle. <laughs> yeah, um, try to pronounce that puppy. Okay, so this is actually <clears throat> the name of this tequila is actually the name of a Mexican hairless dog, hence the picture of the dog right here, right, right there. <clears throat> so it's all their bottles, which is kind of interesting, are 46% alcohol by volume this is a liter bottle this is the añejo i have the blanco a repo añejo extra neo and a hoven the hoven's 48 <clears> percent. <throat> this is 46 percent. so i'm going to do a review on these and see if it's worth adding to ferment and stone if so i'll add it these are uh, liter bottles they're big <clears throat> But being that they're all 46, it's like, okay, well, um, tasting through that line is going to be kind of fun because I'll probably be schnookered by the time I'm done, <laughs> uh, which would be interesting. Come on, guys. Click the thumbs up. Give me a like. Come on. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Just click that thumbs up button. Only 11 likes. Only four people listened to my last message and gave me a like. Click the thumbs up. Give me a like. Come on. <clears throat> all right. So, other things that we want to talk about today. Let me see. Um, I talked about the La Luna special batch. He said he's going to send me a bottle. So, I was talking about trying to get a bottle. Uh, let me make sure this works here. Hold on. Just got a note from... What's this? What? This will be... When was it? Oh. I don't know. All right, let me see. What does it say? April 30th. Oh, he wants to know. Yeah, um... Sorry, hold on a second.
Sorry, I just had a master a master distiller just message me. I needed to get some stuff to him. All right. Uh, okay. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, all right. Rob liked. Yes, be like Rob. There you go. <laughs> Click that thumbs up, guys. Give me a like. Rob's awesome. <clears throat> Rob always likes. Always gives me a like. Mm. All right. So some other things. Um, I rep of Tepozan. I did a review of Tepozan. Unfortunately, I left out the repo, but the repo also got four agave. Um, I don't know how I missed that putting that clip in when I was doing editing, but I did. But um, it's a good brand. I, I, I highly enjoy it as a budget brand. So make sure you check that budget brand video out. Um, and the repo is good too. So I I don't know how I missed the putting the repo video in. So uh, all right. So Jason in Chicago says I see a lot of Cristalino products hitting the market recently. Is is that a gimmick to sell more tequila or is something? But no, it's a gimmick. It's what what Cristalinos are, um, Jason, is they take a, an Añejo uh, out of a barrel, and then when they taste it, and they go, you know, this doesn't taste so good. Um, people aren't going to like this. So we need to fix it in order to be able to sell it. And we need to... And how about if we fix it and they're able to sell it for more because people will think it's ultra premium by taking that Añejo and running it through a carbon filter and we'll filter out not only um, the color of it, so it's clear, but we'll filter out some of the nasty flavors in there too. Uh, and it'll leave a little bit of flavors to, and it's still left after we run it through the uh, pass through the carbon filter. Uh, and then um, if we need to, we'll add some additives to it to make it taste like chocolate and vanilla. So um, those Americans that don't know any better will buy it as well as the, the Mexicans that are looking for luxury tequila or what they perceive as luxury tequila. So they can impress their friends and families. And so they create a Cristalino. And uh, it's basically like a tequila on training wheels. So it's for people that uh, are new to tequila. It's great because it's bland, but it tastes like vanilla and chocolate and caramel uh, and doesn't have much other flavor to it other than that. Uh, or if it's an additive free one, it's really weak flavor wise. Uh, so it'll be really smooth. Um, but not tasting like much of anything, not as complex, nearly as complex as a good um, tequila done right and aged properly and blended properly. Those are where you get the really good, rich, complex flavor profiles, but not from a Cristalino. Crist so I've had a couple of bottles with small bluish green floaties in it, kind of spongy looking with that. Yes, that would be from the still. I tried filtering it, but, but some of it sifted through uh it was still good though yeah it's just uh it's just chips from the, the still but yeah those that would be that would be from the the, the stuff from the still and they didn't <clears throat> they should have like checked to make sure there was none of the, none of the still nitrate floaties in there uh, before they bottled it but you know some places don't I found Plantador at a 1414. Have you had? I haven't had it yet, but I've got some coming for review. So, but um, yeah, it's a, it's widely it's starting to show up on a lot more shelves now. So, and great to know. Thanks. You're welcome. Yeah, stay away from the Crystalinos if you want to be more of a a purist or a, get the re, really get a nice flavor journey on your tequila journey. Um, Crystalinos are, are a marketing gimmick um, meant to cater to people that um, don't like re what real tequila tastes like, I guess. Kind way of saying it. <clears throat> Click the thumbs up, guys. Give me a like. Give me a like. Click the thumbs up. All right. So what else do we want to talk about? We got um, talked about the stuff that's coming for the collective. We talked about... <clears throat> Oh, the, the aging projects. We're on week three for the group aging projects now, and mine are looking really good. Uh, <coughs> I'm going to let it go one more week, and then I'll pull the staves. Uh, I'm going to let mine go four weeks, but if you guys taste yours, if you're doing the aging projects with, <coughs> with me, taste them and see if you like it, and if you do and you, you think it's perfect where it's at, then pull the staves now. If not, then let them go with me, and we'll go longer and uh, try to get those... Um, uh, we'll try to get the same exact flavor profile. So um, I'm going to let mine go for another week. 
and then I'll pull them. So it should be fun, fun to watch. <clears throat> All right, anything else you guys want to talk about? Anything in particular you want to know about? What's going on? Uh, what, let me see. What are the, some of the things that people have, we've talked about? Um, mm, trying to try to think. Okay, I don't, can't think of anything really that comes to mind that we could talk about, but I'm here to answer your questions and maybe this time we'll cut this actually one short instead of going two hours on them. <laughs> Normally you guys have a lot of questions and we go two hours, so. But uh, I'm looking forward to the trip. We'll have a lot of good content for you guys coming out of the trip to Mexico. Um, and uh, maybe come back with some stuff, some special stuff. I have some people that have some stuff they want me to try and I'll be able to tell you guys Get you guys some detailed information about it when I come back, too. Um, when is the next taste off? Oh, you want to do another blind challenge? We can do another blind challenge. Let me see what's the calendar looking like right now. What's? Um, let me see. What's the calendar looking like? Uh, oh, by the way, you guys, today is Pi Day. It's Pi Day. For any of you people that like math and science and stuff, Pi Day is P-I, it's Pi Day, so it's because it's Pi is 3.1415190 and so, and so on, it goes on infinity. Uh, so since it's 314, it's it's Pi Day. So if you go check out a lot of the pizza places and stuff out there or whatever, you can get free pizzas and free pies and stuff. So make sure you do that during Pi Day today. Uh, but let me look at my calendar here. We could do another uh, blind challenge. It's March 14th today. Mm. April, April 5th. Let's do it. Let's do one for April 5th. We'll do a blind challenge. I'm going to keep it a mystery challenge to try to think about what I could really, what I could do with a blind thing. But we'll need three people. I don't want three new people. I don't want the same three people all the time. So give me three people that um, want to try to do the blind challenge. You must be a member of the YouTube channel in order to do so. So if, um, if you're a member of the YouTube channel, send me a DM on, on Instagram to let me know you're interested and with your uh, mailing address, and we'll get it set up. So um, we'll include you on the next blind challenge on April 5th. Let's do it tentatively. If I don't um, get a good response or anything, then um, you know, we may just move it into another time and when we get more a better response. But I'd like to bring some different people on um, to do it and uh, have them try it. But you, you have to not be afraid to come on uh, and on Instagram and join me for a live stream to talk about and do the tastings and stuff. So. Um, Doc James, you're in. Okay, well, are you, if you're if you're a member on YouTube, um, send me a note on Instagram and uh, let me know that you're in. Miguel says he'll do one. Okay, um, are you a member of the YouTube too? Did you join YouTube? I'm trying to do it from the YouTube members because they they need some perks over there. Um, the collective members get a, a lot of perks already, so I need to give some perks to the to the YouTube members, and I think this is a good one for them. So if you uh, are a member of the YouTube channel and join that uh, membership, then, yeah, message me on Instagram and uh, let me know that you're interested. Don't do it here because I won't remember. Um, <clears throat> you want to do it, John? Are you a member of the YouTube channel, John? If you're a member of the YouTube channel, um, send me a note on Instagram and let me know, and we might already have our three panelists right here ready. So. And then I'll think of a, a good, um, and I'll announce it on the next live stream, what the uh, theme of the blind challenge would be. So, yeah, as Rob says, it's easy. He never did it before. He's old and he had reservations, but it was way easy. Yeah, it was way easy. It was fun. Rob had a good time. He just had a tendency of overthinking things a little bit afterwards, too. And we had to, we had to calm him down. <laughs> like oh calm, calm down buddy calm down calm, it's all good <laughs> all right so um that's it anything else you guys want to talk about so let's plan the 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 it sounds like people are already yeah i'm already getting messages
Okay. <laughs> All right. So it sounds like uh, we got everybody situated. Everything's good. We're going to have a new blind challenge on April 5th. Put that on your calendars. Join me on Instagram. Uh, I got some good content to put together for you guys over the next week. So we'll see you next Thursday. And until then, like I always say, life is too short to drink bad tequila. So keep following my reviews. Keep uh, using some of the information I give you to be an informed uh, consumer uh, that will help you in, in picking tequilas that will be um, that will add positivity and enjoyment to your tequila journey. And until next time, salute. Bye, guys. Thank you for, for coming and watching, and thanks for supporting the channel. I appreciate you.